Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Stop Emailing Me, Please. I'll be your host, Ravi Abuvala, and our company, Scaling With Systems, has generated tens of millions of dollars for ourselves and our clients through cold email. And in this video, I'm gonna be auditing five different cold emails that have made their way into my inbox, and I'm gonna be showing you exactly what I would be doing in order to change these emails to make them more likely to get a response, to get a booked call and to close a deal. And I'm gonna be rating them on a scale of one to 10 so you know which ones you should be modeling after and which ones you should be staying away from. Really quickly, if you just want access to the exact cold email template that we use with our clients to generate tens of millions of dollars online, you can click the link in the description down below to get access to that right now, free of charge. All right, this first email here is from a Mr. Vincent Paul. Now let's always look at the subject line as we talk about. So empower your business with a solution oriented lender and a little star after that. So unfortunately, what I've talked about in many of my videos is that you really shouldn't have a subject line that screams that you are uh, trying to sell them something. And if I'm looking at my email and I see an email that says empower your business with a solution oriented lender, I'm probably not even going to open that email. And the problem with that is that it doesn't matter how amazing the rest of your copy is. If you're not getting someone to open your email, then you have about a 0% chance of converting them. So what I would do instead, Vincent here is instead of saying empower your business solutions oriented lender, I'd say something like uh, do a little bit of research on the company, like my company scaling systems and say, uh, I heard scaling with systems need some capital question mark, right? So that is a great, I just came up with that, but that's a great subject line because it says my company name. So now I'm looking at it. And number two, I'm like, who said that scaling systems needs capital? I don't need any capital. We have plenty of money, right? But by saying that, you're invoking a response, which is very likely going to get them to open it. They also think that you're sending this email to them specifically instead of the email blast, which you've obviously done here, which also leads to a higher open rate, okay? First uh, message here, it says, Ruby Walla, hope you're doing well. I also don't love this intro line. I've said this multiple times, but if you're sending a cold email, copywriting is all about getting someone's permission to read the next line. So if I'm wasting the most valuable three to five seconds of the cold message, which is the intro message with, I hope you're doing well, it's very unlikely that I'm going to read the rest of this email. Okay. The only reason I'm going to read the rest of it is because I'm trying to show you guys here, but instead what you want to do is you want to open up a, what's known as a loop, or you want to essentially get to the call to action or the direct transformation as quickly as possible. Another main point about making sure that you are saying something that is is a little bit more persuasive, I should say, and also blends in with the subject line is that in a lot of email providers, specifically Gmail, you have what's known as uh, pre-header text. And this means that before they even open their email, they're gonna be reading the first few words inside of, it like shows the first 14 words in your email inbox. So before I open this, I can see that someone says, hey, Ravi, I hope you're doing well, which is not bad, but once again, I'd, I'd rather do something that kind of it goes along with what my subject line is and opens a loop and shows kind of how we can help people. So if my new subject line says, uh, I heard scaling systems needs capital question mark, I'd say, Hey, Ravi, which, you know, by the way, no one says Ravi Bubala in their email. Whoever says like Ravi Bubala, that's once again, another, I would just use the first name. Hey, Ravi, comma, uh, I heard that scaling with systems need some capital question mark. Boom, stays with the subject line and, and I, I want to read on from there. Then from there, I would make it more along the lines of like how I can help you in a direct call to action. What Vincent's done instead is that we both know that small businesses are the backbone of our country. Vincent, do I know that? I probably don't really know that to be honest. Honestly, I mean, I do agree, but like, you know, no one's going to say, oh, small businesses aren't the backbone of our country. But at the same time, you know, you're making an assumption here. And I think it's also a waste of text. That's why we're committed to providing them with the capital reserves they need to grow and succeed. I'd love to discuss how together we can help maximize your potential. I mean, once again, Vincent, if you're watching this, this is no insults, but you know, you couldn't have a more bland message if you tried, right? It's just like, oh, we're committed to helping them grow and succeed. Let's see if we can maximize your potential. This is like stuff that you'd read on personal development magazine that was made in 1940s. Instead, you need to be much more uh, direct with what you'd say. So instead of saying, you know, I already told you the first line and instead of saying, we both need that small business on the back of the country. I'd say, Hey, Ravi comma, is it true that scaling systems needs capital question mark? I can get you access up to $350,000 at lower than, uh, you know, 6% interest rates in the next 30 days period. 
it. Uh, the best part is, you know, you don't have to pay any taxes on this money. If you're interested in learning more, click here to book a time to speak with me. Boom, that's uh, straight to the point. I told him exactly what I could do. I told him I could do it maybe lower than the interest rate of what they could get it elsewhere. I might add something inside of there that says like, uh, no no income verification needed and uh, we can get you approved if you're even if you're getting denied by the banks, right? So these are all things that are like, what's going through this person's mind? Why should I work with you? And then what are the benefits? I might even add a line in there that says something like, uh, we've helped fund over $3 billion in the last two years for our clients, uh, or like uh, something along the lines of, we've all, uh, you can use this working capital in order to spend more money on ads to get more customers and pay back your loan. All of these are much more specific, much more direct and much more persuasive than like, let's help reach your potential, okay? Another thing I don't love about this email is uh, they have this big logo right here. If I'm opening this email and I see this logo right here, I'm immediately probably gonna exit out of it because nobody sends a personal email that has this big logo and it is known that gmail they scan the emails when you receive them to know if they're spam or not spam and when you have a big image in it it's much more likely to go to spam than it is to not go to spam so i'd say the majority of emails try not to send any images inside of them to get your best chance of it landing in the inbox all in all i'd probably rate this email one out of ten all right email number two this one is from camilo nieto uh, the first thing it says is raj save on recruitment costs and finding top talent with Remoti, but it's too Ravi Babala. So Raj uh, used to be an employee of my company and apparently they pulled, scraped some information online that had Raj's information still. But the lesson for you here is definitely don't send an email using the wrong first name, okay? So wherever you are getting your email scraping sources, which I have a bunch of different YouTube videos that walk through my recommendations of email scraping sources, make sure that information is as accurate as possible because immediately that it says, hi Raj, I know that this person has no idea uh, what they're doing. And in all reality, also at our company scaling with systems, any kind of Google result will show my face. I'm, I'm very much the face of the company. So this shows me that this person has done absolutely no uh, research on their part. And they're pretty much just sending a blast email out, which I could care less about. That being said, let's audit the entire thing, right? So first of all, it says Raj save on recruitment costs and finding top tech talent with remote T. You guys know how I feel about subject lines. I'm not trying to open an email and get sold to. I get sold to 5,000 times a day. So instead, what might make more sense is something like Ravi, comma, uh, I heard you're looking to hire, question mark, right? So that that's pretty much what you're saying by sending someone an email is that, oh, you're looking to hire, but this is much more persuasive. So Ravi, comma, uh, I heard you're looking to hire or Ravi, comma, another really great example of this would be if this person, Camilo, did some research before they sent their emails and they were only messaging to people that had job postings on websites like Upwork or LinkedIn or ZipRecruiter, then they could know exactly the postings that they're looking for and when people are looking to hire. So you know that they have a much a higher level of awareness and then you could go and talk about that job posting. So you could say something like Ravi comma saw your posting for a client's test manager on LinkedIn. How, how high do you think that that response rate would be and that open rate would be right? And it would just take a few more minutes of your time to make sure you're sending the email to the right person, Camilo, and also that the person's interested in your products and services. But most people just download a list of, of information online, copy and paste it in some kind of email sending software that they thought was gonna make them a million dollars and send it out expecting people to just be begging to do business with them, right? When in reality, you need to take a little bit more time up front, which I've talked about in many of my YouTube videos to make it much more personal and make sure that they're even interested in what you're looking for in the first place, okay? So that was how, probably be how I changed the subject line. And then it says, hi Raj, uh, Raj, companies in your industry face challenges when recruiting, retaining and hiring top talent. Wow, could you be any more vague and broad than that? After reviewing scaling with, all right, you know what? You know what, Camilo? I'm very disappointed because I don't know where you're getting this information from, but you're not even saying scaling with systems. So you're using the wrong name, first of all. And second of all, you're saying after reviewing scaling with, scaling with what? Scaling with potatoes, cars, scaling with planes, scaling with systems, okay? I'm reviewing scaling with systems. I'm confident that a synergy between our companies would mutually benefit. Wow, that I'd be very curious to hear how you were confident with that if you can't even get my name right. We specialize in finding the best uh, IT talent, both 
uh, nationally and internationally. Additionally, we offer a payroll solution that simplifies the process and reduce operation costs up to 30%. Would you be interested in exploring this further? All right, well, honestly, this one's gonna be, I'm gonna take this from a two down to a one as well. This one's pretty awful, in my opinion. I'm not really gonna go too much deeper in this because I'm already just upset. I'm taking this probably a little too personally than I should, that you got my name wrong and you just said scaling wet. I'd rather you just say nothing. After reviewing your company, I'm confident that a synergy between our companies could benefit. Uh, the few tips I'd probably give on here is don't ever copy this email, number one. Number two, um, I would have probably put a little bit more things, once again, if I went to the personal side and said, hey, Ravi, I saw your post on, on LinkedIn on that you're looking to hire a client success manager. Did you know that on average, LinkedIn hire takes uh, 90 or 120 days to find someone and they have a 50% attrition rate, meaning that they leave, right? What we can do is we can get find, interview, and place a client success manager in the next four days that's guaranteed to stay for the next 90 days or you don't pay, right? These are all kind of more direct response messaging that I would have used in order to convince, uh, to have a much more persuasive uh, email that could convince them to respond back. Also, try not ever to say, would you be interested in exploring this further? Give a direct call to action. Leave your phone number, book a call here, you know? Would you be interested in exploring this further? No, Camilo, I would not. All right, email number three. This one is from uh, vizjogamcorp1977 at kocpromotion.com. That doesn't sound sketchy at all. Uh, business consulting at Ravi Bavala. Not a great subject line, but at least you got my name inside of there. Uh, hi, Ravi Bavala. Once again, do not use first and last name whenever you're sending cold emails. Hope you are doing well. We kindly request a collaboration. Okay, hope you're doing good. I know this is a little blurry. Sorry about the pixelation. Uh, hope you're doing good exclamation point and then a uh, lowercase we kindly request a collaboration so you know right off the bat please 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 make sure your stuff is grammatically correct um that's a big problem with a lot of cold emails that i get i i feel like if you can't type grammar correctly if you can't spell it out correctly then i don't know what else you're not doing correctly as well and there's dozens of free software like grammarly out there which will correct your email before you send it so doesn't really have any excuse for sending an email that has uh, incorrect grammar here is the info about this campaign, product title, uh, fly fans for tables. Okay, these are fly fans. This guy thinks that somehow I would be great to sell fly fans. Um, and with that being said, let's go to the sponsor of this video. Fly fans, are you tired of going outside and sitting down to eat lunch and dinner and having all those flies around you? Well, just imagine if instead of flies, you could have literally propellers around all of your food and around your faces that if you get too close, would slap your hand and maybe Maybe even permanently damage your children. Well, congratulations. If you click the link in the description down below, you can get your access to Fly Destroyer. <laughs> so these are some ridiculous names here. Anyway, I was having some fun there. Uh, the product picture, I told you guys previously about uh, having images inside of the emails. It will almost always get you to spam, which by the way, this one says this message is from a mailing list, which uh, means right off the bat that I'm probably not gonna open it, which is because uh, this person is using a lot of kind of spammy and and uh, copy and paste messages, which is having Google and Apple say, hey, this person's from a mailing list. So try not to do that. Add lines of personalization, remove um, remove pictures inside of there, and you will have a much higher chance of having someone actually read it. This product will be given to you, and we look forward to exchanging our product for a YouTube video. Oh, this guy does want a YouTube video. Well, here you go, my man. Here is your claim to fame right now. Will this work for you? Please let me know if you're interested. Yours, Anna, happy life, happy every day. Well, Anna, at least you're happy life and you're happy every day. I got to give you that. Uh, also, you don't have, if I go inside of here, you don't have a business address, which if I had to guess, you might not be in the United States, but in the United States, you have to have a your business address in your email to prevent it from breaking C-SPAM laws. You know, I did not plan for this all to be one out of tens, guys, but this one also might be a one out of 10, to be honest with you. Uh, also, business consulting at Revivala has nothing to do with what this email message is about. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go any further on that one. One out of 10. All right, ooh, we're getting a little political here, ladies and gentlemen. This one's gonna be good. This one's good indeed. Senator Jackie Rosen, action needed. Confirm your support for background checks. Okay, right off the bat, I'm gonna say this is the best one we've read so far. Let's put the politics to the side, ladies and gentlemen. I don't even know who Senator Jackie Rosen in is, but I will say that great subject line. Action needed in all caps. This is good. Confirm your support for background checks. Oh, God, I need a background check. Something along those lines. I would say that this is a, the strongest one we've seen so far and a very strong one because it gives enough information that you uh, are you're not going to be bait and switch when you go inside of it, but it doesn't start with like, 
you know, I'm a politician. Doesn't scream, I'm a politician inside of there. So uh, I like the subject line inside of here. Then let's say friend. Okay, well, now I'm already Senator Jackie Rosen or whoever wrote this email already. Let's not say friend. All right, let's be honest here. I don't even know who you are, to be quite frank with you. So to call me friend, that's a bold move. It's a bold move. So friend, nope, I don't like that. The surge in mass shootings we've seen nationwide has made one thing painfully clear. We must take immediate action towards ending our gun violence epidemic. Wow, this is probably going to get some comments in the description down below. That's why I'm fighting in the Senate to close loopholes and require background checks and unlicensed firearms, including those made online or in a gun show. Although 90% of Americans support comprehensive background check, federal laws does not require unsolicited uh, unlicensed sellers to conduct them before transferring a, uh, transferring a firearm, but I know we can change that. I believe we need meaningful progress on gun safety reform, but I would want to know that you're with me, friend, once again. So if I had to take a guess, what they might be doing is um, they might be doing this email blast. And when you do email blast, some software allows you that if you don't have the first name of the person, you can replace it with a different word. So if I had to take a guess, they probably are replacing it with the word friend. Uh, I hope that's the case. If they're just saying friend to somebody they don't know, that's a bold move because uh, I'm not your friend, Senator Rosie Jackson, Jackie Rosen. See, I don't even know your name. I'm looking for 10,000 supporters to stand up for universal background checks by midnight tonight, but time is running out and I'm still missing your signature. The campaign is about listening to what you have to say. Really? It's about listening to what you have to say. That'd be a first. Uh, your input is critical to our strategy. So please, will you add your name right now to confirm your support for expanding background checks? Add your name. Okay. Honestly, really not a bad email. Uh, this is probably surprising enough the politician got it right probably because i won't i won't get into that in this video here but anyway uh, i i actually think this is this is probably a seven out of ten right reasons is seven out of ten subject line is really solid number one number two uh different they chunk down the messages into different paragraphs instead of having everything in one big block of text number three after they chunk down they also added uh bold they added underlines they added highlights uh in order to capture your attention allow you to scan it more easily and number four a very clear call to action with a hyperlink here and even a button that says add your name uh, underneath it as well so yeah seven out of ten a reason why I, i'm deducting a few points is number one uh, it says friend when it shouldn't say friend uh, number two you know if i, I could have done a little bit stronger of a subject line so this says action needed to confirm your support for background checks i might say something more along the lines of like action needed for gunmen loose in your area i know that's a little bit uh, i know don't get upset at me i'm just trying to get people to open emails here okay and yeah uh, you know, maybe I'll give this an eight. Those aren't, yeah, I'd probably give this an eight out of 10. Uh, yeah, I'll give this an eight out of 10. And those are the two reasons I'd drop off it. Okay, finally, number five. This one is by Sophia Hansen. You're pre-approved for an SBA loan starting at 3.75. Okay, really not a bad subject line, uh, especially because interest rates right now are like six or seven percent, and they're going higher. So I, I think if I actually went back, I, I didn't even realize this email said this. If I went back to that other email I talked about, I said that they should put the interest rates inside of there. So a really, really st a good start to the subject line. But at the same time, Sophia, I would have probably made it so that the subject line was much more personalized and more curiosity driven. Because you know, how often do we get like email or mail? in the mail where it says like, you know, you're pre-approved for this credit card. You just know that you have no interest in opening that. So instead of saying you're pre-approved for an SBA loan starting at 375, I would say the same thing I talked about earlier, like, uh, hey, Ravi, comma, uh, I heard scaling systems needs working capital. And then let's see here. Hey, Ravi Vala, once again, please, please, please stop putting last names inside of here. Based on your DNB credit, your company has been approved for an SBA loan. If people don't know, DNB is Duns and Bradstreet credit, which by the way, uh, in my experience in business, 99% of people have no idea what DNB credit is. And so I would probably recommend not using acronyms of things that people have to understand. So I'd say based on your business credit, exact same thing, but much more easier to understand than based on your DNB credit. Uh, <laughs> oh, Marie or Sophia, you were so close. Based on your DMB credit, company has been approved for an SBA loan, right? You, 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 Sophia, go back into the same freaking box as Camilo here that said scaling with. But at least I'll give you, you said company instead of scaling with, right? So instead of saying based on your uh, business credit, scaling with assistance has been a pre approved for a SBA loan. The gold standard in small business lending, period. New paragraph is what I would have done. 
Some of the program highlights are listed below. Interest rates starting at 3.75%, loan amounts 30,000 to 5 million, re repayment terms 10 to 25 years, expedited approval process with approvals as fast as four hours and delivered in as little as 24 hours. Great job, Sophia. I really didn't read this email before I read the other ones. Um, I just literally screenshotted uh, five random ones. But this is, if you remember what I talked about earlier about the other guy, the first person we did, Vincent here, very similar, you know, talked about how we could get a lower interest rate, how much they could get me, how long it would take me to pay it back and how long, um, uh, how long it would take me to get approved and get access to the funds. So those are really, really great. Actually, I like all of this. An SBA loan can help cover working capital need. It sounds like Sophia might have watched this video already. Give me a call or complete a quick quote to get the process started. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out anytime. Honestly, this is a good email. I'll be other than the fact that you said DMB credit and you said company instead of my name. I and the subject line could have been a little bit stronger. A very good email, straight to the points, um, and it is a, a direct call to action. Uh, you have hyperlinks, specific areas inside of there, and there's paragraphs and bullet points to simplify this a lot. So I'd probably give this one an eight or a nine out of ten as well. Don't forget to click the link in the description down below to get access to our cold email template that has generated tens of millions of dollars online, totally free.